Hey guys, I don't know about you, but I'm a filer too and a gamer on a budget. I can't afford to spend $60 anymore on a game, play it for a month or two, and never touch it again. That's why I got into Steam and PC gaming. Today, I'm going to show you how affordable it is and how you can take your PC currently that you have right now and turn it into a kick ass game playing Steam machine. My name is Sean, you're in the Luma Studio Garage, and it's time for some Nerd Cave. bad rap saying that if you don't have a two thousand dollar computer and you're not putting money into it upgrading it all the time then it's not worth it to use it for gaming that's just simply not true you can go to best buy walmart and purchase a pc for 500 bucks put about 100 to 150 dollars in upgrades in it and you have a pc that can pretty much run anything that you want to that you would on ps4 uh, or xbox one so today i'm going to show you the hardware side uh what's inside this computer uh to stop being nervous about it if you do upgrade what upgrades are would be good uh, for you to play the games that you want to on your PC. Uh, graphics cards and how easy they are to install. And we're also going to talk about Steam and PC. I'm going to go in and actually show a little tutorial on how Steam works, how to download it, what it looks like in big picture mode. So here we go. All right, getting into the meat and potatoes of the hardware here. This is an old PC. Uh, the new Dell that I have, uh, like I said, it's nothing special, but this is the older one before it. Nothing special either, but just for demonstration purposes, I want to show you where the graphics card is, where the RAM is, and the power supply. So this is the power supply right here. This is pretty important if you're putting a new graphics card in, because you need probably at least 400 to 450 watts uh, for your power supply. Because a lot of these uh, video cards take uh, a power supply off of it. They need power uh, input which takes out of here, which takes out of the rest of the computer. So you need to make sure you have enough. It's just like overloading a breaker in your house. You don't want to do that inside your PC. Chances are you'll be okay, but that could be an upgrade in the future that you want to look at. There are four screws back here. One, two, three, four. You take those off and this whole power supply will pull off. Then you buy another one, you put it right back into place. And these are all pretty uh, standard for the screw sizes and where they're at. That's it, that's as easy as it is. The wires that come off of this all plug into uh, specific parts of your computer, but all that you have to do, honestly, it's really hard to screw it up. I mean, make sure that when you unplug the wires uh, that you put them in the right spot when you're done, uh, or tag them if you need to, or label them. But like I said, it's extremely simple and it looks a lot more complicated than it is. If you can see, this connector here has probably about 16 wires that are going in. That's a big chunk of the actual wires that are in here. So there's not really as many connections as you would think. This right here is your processor. This is an older processor. I'm not even sure what it is. But once again, if you have a dual core or a quad core, uh, you're probably good to go. Uh, on the Intel side, I probably recommend an i5 processor, uh, quad core, to run most of the computer uh, games that you want to. But if you have an i3, that'll work no problem. That's what I have. And uh, like I said, my, my graphic stuff is good. I probably everything set on medium, which is the equivalent of Xbox One or PlayStation 4. This part right here is your graphics card slot. So your video card or graphics card slot actually goes straight into here. And then the external portion shows in this little slider portion here. If you look from the other side, this is where you're going to connect like your HDMI and your uh, just standard uh, monitor uh, plug-in is going to be back there. This right here is your RAM. There's four different sticks of RAM. Some computers you get them and only two of these are, are taken and there's two that are still open. All you have to do is hit a button like that. And the RAM comes straight out. Take it out, take the new one, put it right back into place, push the button back down and you have yourself uh, your RAM upgrade. I would probably recommend at least 6 gig of RAM uh, for most games that you can play, like the heavier duty games. Uh, of course you can do more than that, it's a very inexpensive upgrade, uh, but that might be something you want to look into. So to make your computer play the most up to date stuff, I would say your graphics card, your RAM, and your power supply. The processor that you have is going to play a big part in uh, all the games that you're playing, but if you're just going introductory level and you have basically a dual core i3 uh, or better than that, 
you have enough introductory that you can play pretty much any game that's out there on the settings. Uh, so that's the hardware. Those are the upgrades that you need to worry about if you want to upgrade. A lot of the computers that are out there right now will play most of the games that are out, uh, but you know they're not going to play the more heavy duty games. That's where you're going to need to buy an actual graphics card, maybe update your RAM, and make sure your power supply is up to 450 or higher. That's it. That's about $150 in upgrades on any PC that's out there, and you have yourself a new system. Heck, a lot better than paying 400 bucks for PlayStation 4. This is a graphics card that I currently use on my PC inside. As you can see, it's a GeForce GCX 650 Ti SSC, which is super, super clocked, at 2 gig for the RAM that's on here. This right here probably costs about $100 on Amazon if you jump on right now. It's an introductory level uh, graphics card now, uh, medium, I would say. It plays pretty much everything that I need to, and uh, definitely in my computer, my weakest link is definitely my processor, not my graphics card. This graphics card is probably the equivalent of, like I said, a PS4 or an Xbox One. Uh, so it does really well. It's only 100 bucks. As you can see the picture, this is what the actual card looks like. Uh, you can see there's little inputs down here that slides into a slot in your computer. And then over here, these are the actual connections that stick out that I'm gonna be talking about. On the PC that I was showing you, those pieces go into this slot right here, and then all the connections fit to this portion here. Then you take a screw, and you screw it in, and it's completely done. That's as easy as it is to uh, install this. There might be a power supply that you have to hook up to, or a power source. It's usually just a little cable you have to plug in to power it up. That's it. When you work in a computer, this is really vital to you. Make sure all the power is off. Um, a, a lot of people put uh, static wristbands on and they connect it to something metal to ground you out so you can stay away from static. Uh, if you hit something in your computer and static hits it, there's a good chance it could fry it. I've never ran into that, um, but I don't want to tell you I don't recommend it personally. I usually don't wear the static wristbands. I just, you know, I'm pretty careful when I do this stuff. This one doesn't have it, but a lot of computers have a button that you can turn off the actual power. That's not good enough. The power is still going to the power supply. You just have the button off. You need to actually physically unplug the power cable that's going into your PC. That way you can make sure there's no power going in here at all. Once all your upgrades are done, all you have to do is plug your cable back in uh, to the piece here, turn it on, and then your computer should automatically uh, see all of the upgrades that you've done to your computer. And also if you have a disc with your graphics card, that's when you'll have to install the disc and install all the drivers and everything that you need. Like I said, it's very, it's very simple. We live in a world now where everybody's pretty used to technology, so pretty much anybody can do this. But like I said, if you have any questions, get hold of me. All right, guys, now to download Steam, all that you're going to do is open up your standard browser that you have, like Internet Explorer and Chrome. Click on the top, put in Steam, powered.com. It's going to take you to Steam's website. This is just going to be the standard website you can look at that will give you some different pricing on games, cool stuff like that. On the top here, you're going to see a little green icon that says Install Steam. You're going to click on that. And then you are going to click on Install Steam. It's going to download your computer just like any other software that's out there. Uh, once that software is installed, you'll have to make a username and password. Uh, after you have your username and password, you're going to see an icon that's going to look a lot like this one at the bottom of the screen here. It's a little bluish, like dark blue and light blue little gear. Click on that and it's going to open up Steam. This is the actual Steam program. As you can see on the left hand side here, these are all the different games that I purchased in the past year and a half or so. And these are only probably three quarters of the ones that I actually have on my PC. But these games are like Amnesia, which is a big game on PC, Batman Arkham series, Bioshock Infinite, Dead Space 1 through 3, uh, Doom 3, uh, let's see here, Far Cry 3, tons of different games. I don't think I'd say I'd spend an average of $5 per game. That's it. These are games that are usually 20 bucks or higher still right now. Uh, you can go to the store, and the store is going to show you inside here all the different deals that are going on right now. You can look up by type of game, and then you can download those. They go directly to your library and start downloading for you. Other than that, on the top right here, this is big picture mode. This little controller that you see that's right up here. If you click on that, This launches Big Picture Mode. Big Picture Mode is going to look just like your interface on a PlayStation 4 or an Xbox One or 360 or PS3. This is going to look a lot like your uh, actual dashboard that you go through with all of your games. You can use the actual mouse if you want to. Um, personally, I like to use an Xbox controller myself. 
So I do have an Xbox controller hooked up. Which I can use to navigate through everything. You can go directly to the store and look at all the games like we looked before, just more on a console. Uh, or you can go to a library and look through all the games that you've recently played. Go down to your standard games, which these are all the games that are available to play. As you can see, I have quite a few in here. This is my primary monitor that I use. This is normally in the in the, uh, the nerd cave that you see in the rest of the videos, but now it's cold, we have to bring it inside. As you can see, coming over to the left, I have a little device here. It's a wired USB. It just plugs directly into the back of your PC. You can buy this for about $12 on Amazon. This will wirelessly plug up three, or, I'm sorry, four Xbox 360 uh, controllers so that you can play multiplayer or just one controller, which is what I'm using right now. And my HDMI is going directly to my TV. And as you can see, I am now playing a top of the line PC game, just like you would an Xbox or a PlayStation. It is that simple. All right guys, so there you have it. That's as easy as it is to get Steam going on a computer. You can obviously tell how much you can save, especially with Steam sales and things like that that are going on. Paying a fraction of a price for the actual uh, software itself. Uh, hopefully you guys are educated enough that you can try looking into this. Download Steam on your computer and uh, download a couple free games and see how they run on your PC. That'll give you a good idea if you just want to dabble into it. It's free to download Steam uh, and I absolutely love it. Once you get used to it, you'll never want to go back to console gaming. My name is Sean, you're in the Luma Studio Garage, and we'll see you next time. Download your computer just like any other software that's out there. Uh, once that software is installed, you'll have to make a username and password. Uh, after you have your username and password, you're going to see an icon that's going to look a lot like this one at the bottom of the screen here. It's a little bluish, like dark blue.